Approximately three and a half million years ago, the heart of our Milky Way exploded into life and shot out two beams that would have been clearly visible from Earth. What could have caused this and what does it tell us about what lies at the heart of our Milky Way? A team of scientists recently detected that these beams left traces in a trail of gas called the Magellanic Stream, which lies about 200 light years away and actually encircles the Milky Way. They were able to use Hubble observations of this stream and identified three large regions where the gas is unusually hot. These regions align with the north and south poles of the Milky Way Galactic Center. They calculated that this must have occurred about 3.5 million years ago. Scientists also matched this to the previously reported X-ray bubbles that were detected from the poles of the Milky Way. This is thought to be caused by a strong ionizing radiation event from Sagittarius A. These types of beams are normally seen in safer galaxies, which is not what our Milky Way is. And they believe that this beam may have lasted for about 300,000 years. Now, currently, scientists believe that there is a supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy. It was believed that this was dormant, but these new findings point to something which can reactivate it from time to time. But they admit that the reason for this intermittent nature is unknown at the moment. So does Eric Lerner's plasmoid model fit this picture? So just to recap, in Lerner's model, the plasmoid would form every 100,000 years and during this period, it would pulse from both north and south axes, and it would then fall dormant for a considerable period until the process restarted again. And this process of on and off could go on for about 30 million years. So the first problem is the duration of the event. In the model he quoted, a range for the duration of the plasmoid as hundreds of thousands of years but this would clearly put it on the larger end of the scale for a plasmoid. And really, our galaxy is on the smaller side compared to some of the massive galaxies out there. It is also worth considering that even if the plasmoid only lasted 100,000 years, it would still take a considerable amount of time for these beams to travel further away, and therefore would have been visible for a much longer period of time than the initial formation process. Another problem would be why this process hasn't then repeated. Why did it occur only once 3.5 million years ago? One possibility is that some event caused a massive influx of plasma into the core of the galaxy and that this caused a much larger plasmoid to form than normally would. Now, another thing to consider is that in Lerner's model, these events would only last for about 30 million years and then the process would simply cease. And this was partly because he originally modeled this on a safer galaxy, which are thought to be younger galaxies and over time thought to become less active. And in his model, all the gas in the galactic core would essentially be used up and therefore too little would remain to cause an inward flow to occur after a certain period of time, leading it to be a more normal, quieter galaxy. The problem is that the more we study galaxies, the more that we realize is they are far from these quiet things. Only two weeks ago, I reported on the liner galaxies, which spontaneously jumped back into safer galaxies. Now, is it possible that in the initial formation process, they are active and consume the majority of the material in about this 30 million years? Then the galaxy calms down, and we know that there is a general inflow of material into the galactic core. Is it possible that there is occasionally enough material built up to cause another plasmoid to form, bringing the core back to life, but only for a very short period of time? The question then is, what state is it in now? And when we examine the stars surrounding Sagittarius A, we see that they are indeed orbiting something. In Lerner's model, at the end of each cycle, the plasmoid is used up. But the question is, what is left behind? From his lab experiments, there was nothing left at the end of the cycle. 
We also know that there is gas and plasma which surround Sagittarius A, and there is a clear structure of material flowing towards and away from us in various regions around Sagittarius A. And if we examine the motion of the stars surrounding Sagittarius A, we will see that it is very chaotic. In fact, it looks very different from the majority of the galaxy and very different from most planetary systems. Stars seem to orbit in both clockwise and anticlockwise motions, and there is no preferred plane of rotation. And this to me suggests that this system has not existed for long enough for this to happen. And one of the concepts of the electric universe is that the galactic magnetic field is driven either by an incoming current or by the plasmoid at the galactic center. Now this would act like a motor driving the motion of the entire galaxy. Yet when we examine these stars, their motions do not match this concept of being driven. Now if Lerner's model is correct, then for large parts of a galaxy's life, this internal structure should be very ordered. However, when it disappears, this driving force would suddenly vanish. This should cause the stars, in theory, to go flying off because there's nothing pulling them back in and they already have a certain amount of angular momentum. And indeed, we have seen reports of some stars flying off from our galactic center. But you would really expect this to happen to all of them, and it does not. And this means that some force is holding these stars in place. But their more chaotic pattern would indicate that this is a more recent setup. This chaotic nature would lead me to believe that these objects are caught in a gravitational orbit. I feel there is a clear piece of the puzzle missing here. Could a plasmoid cause an accumulation of matter at its heart? This was certainly not detected in any of Lerner's experiments. The question would then be what would happen to this when the new plasmoid formed? Could the remaining material form a small, dense object in its place? I would doubt that this object would be massive enough to cause this type of motion. Let's be clear, I'm certainly not saying that this is a black hole. It is clear from the images of the motion of the stars that there is no gravitational lensing, and I have previously covered some of the reasons I don't think black holes exist. Lerner's model is able to account for a lot of what we see, even explain to an extent why the motion of these stars would be more chaotic now. The missing piece is explaining what they are orbiting about and what force is causing this motion. Could it be that towards the end of the cycle, the plasmoid remains but becomes less and less energetic? So in other words, it has enough mass to cause this motion, and as its magnetic and electric field diminishes, that gravitational force becomes the dominant force until more material falls in. There are some big questions that go along with this. Can a plasmoid remain stable in dark mode for long enough? And what would the electrical and magnetic characteristics of such an object be? then how would new material be added to this plasmoid? Lerner's experiments were not intended to test this scenario. Bostick did, however, do extensive work on plasmoids joining together and showed that there are circumstances where this can happen, but equally circumstances where it will not happen. I think what is obvious is that there are still many questions that need to be answered regarding what sits at the core of a galaxy. Now for me one other takeaway which is I think equally monumental is the thought that this would have been visible in the night sky. There would have been a pronounced difference over a long period of time as the beams extended upwards from both poles of the Milky Way. At the time that this occurred it is thought that our early ancestors walked the earth the question is, did it leave any impression on them at this time? I know that the petroglyphs are believed to be much more recent than this, but as I discussed with Walter Cruttenden, it is likely that man is far older than we currently accept. So what would it have looked like if they had created petroglyphs of this object?
As always, be brave, be curious. The truth is waiting for us. Until next time.